What's up guys, and welcome back to WBC Builds, and welcome to episode 7 of my Let's Build Wolverhampton series. Now, avid viewers of the channel will notice this is not part 2 of the high street, and that is correct. We are actually standing on Dock Lane, the wealthiest, most upper class part of Wolverhampton I have built to date, and I'll explain why we're here and not on the high street later on in the video, but without further ado, I think we should get in to showing you guys how I built this street, and just telling you a bit more of the backstory of it. So, without further ado, let's get into the build. Okay then, let's get started. So, located in the south of Wolverhampton, the Dock Lane area was built on top of lands owned by a house known as The Grove. Now, The Grove fell into disrepairs around about the turn of the 1800s, 19th century, and it was sold off to you know all sorts of different landowners. And then eventually the railway came through here, demolished what was left of the old house, and took over a lot more of the land so i wanted to build the railway first through here as it gave a hard boundary as to where i could build up against you can see all of the red planned out roads and a section of what is stonehouse lane built up there in the top left corner so a little bit more history about the grove it's been around as a manor house in Wolverhampton from about the year 1100s and it'd been built up over years and years and years and it finally got demolished in 1800 and like i said all the lands sold off the name lives on it lives on in quite a few of the villas and houses around here but we'll get onto that later on now the first house we're going to start building soon is a beautiful red brick later victorian house known as dartmoor house sits right at the end of dock lane stonehouse lane and facing what is Lymore park road now if you guys want to see a tutorial on how i built this house block for block it was one of my first proper tutorials great fun to do have a look at the link click the card up above that was a great fun good video so this house is named after Dartmoor in Devon in real life and I, I gave it that name because there's quite a lot of sort of connections to this area here with houses in Plymouth and around uh, Devon and during building this area I was doing a lot of research into Regency styled houses and Torquay and Torbay came up a lot so I thought you know what why not give this house and a few other buildings along here a bit more of a name to do with those areas as a nice little touch just to sort of show what I've been looking at recently. Now this house itself came from Livington on Stanley Road in the south of the town and I've always looked at it, walked past it and gone that's a beautiful looking house and sitting here in the game it even looks great with those muted colours from the birch and the red brick. Right so it's now time to move on up to the top left corner of Stonehouse Lane. Now Stonehouse Lane was built just after the railway came through so the houses along here are a lot later than the Regency style houses were built in the latter part of the video. These houses again were based on some I saw in Plymouth. They've got Italianate sort of features in the windows and they have a beautiful bow window or bay window at the base of the building. And what is quite nice about this area of Dock Lane, and we'll get onto it later on as well, is the different styles but yet still very reminiscent styles that can be built all within the same time period. So this building I'm currently doing now is a Regency style building, but it was built in the 1790s. Now this is part of the Grove Estate. It's the only building left. It was actually the, the caretaker's gardener's house and it gave way to actually the, the designs and the way the people built the rest of Dock Lane because of this, this unique iconic style with the bow window and the very nice stuccoed front. The railway line here goes off all the way down through Hambridge down to Sutton and we'll get on to later videos where we actually go and build Sutton. I have mentioned it before and I'll mention it again now. Uh, that is my next project, building a proper nice seaside town which will feature a lot more buildings similar to these dotted around the place, lots of Regency style buildings and just lots and lots of white and yellow colors okay moving on now to four more villas these are known as stonehouse villa and i've actually done another tutorial on these as well i know i'm just plugging all my videos throughout this why shouldn't i <laughs> anyway so this is a based off of a italianate styled london terraced uh, villa 
I was looking around Google Earth quite a bit and I came up with lots of designs for these sorts of buildings and they just kept I kept seeing them all over the place I kept going wow these are really impressive the yellow bricks work really well with the quartz as a nice contrast and the hipped roofs that hang over the outside on the eaves is a very reminiscent style of these Italianate buildings along with the arched windows and the pillar in the center of the top windows so I've been wanting to build this style for a long time and I'm going to be doing it a lot more throughout all of these videos and throughout all of the towns I build because it's a very English style but yet it's still reminiscent of the Mediterranean of the Renaissance period buildings. Uh, designed and well brought to the country mainly by John Nash in the very early 19th century it, it's it's gone through quite a few changes but it's a very common style throughout the, the, the old British Empire and Britain at the same time so you'll see lots of it around and I'm going to be building lots of it as well so just adding a skew bridge here underneath the railway uh, I like building bridges I especially like building them on the angles because it really does give a nice effect okay moving on now to Dock Lane proper. We're going to start up in the top left corner here with Grove Villas 1 and 2. Like I said, the Grove name lives on throughout this area. So these villas are based on a couple again I saw in London. I can't remember exactly. I believe it was Kensington or maybe even Chelsea. And I built these as a sort of test to see how the rest of the street would look with these really nice prominent uh, white looking buildings. So my main fear for this whole street was it was going to be too overpoweringly white. Uh, Minecraft obviously has quartz, uh, smooth quartz and quartz if you want to go pure white. But I don't. I like using white concrete which has this really nice texture to it. It's sort of a blue hue with a grey and especially when you have shaders on like my BSL shaders. It gives you a nice grey stuccoed look which is very, very period. And it, when you offset it there with a dark oak uh, fence as a drain pipe oh it works so well so all of these buildings along here have a hipped roof that's what this is here with the and again that is very period uh, i know i love saying about how things are period but that's because if you put in uh, details and designs into buildings that really don't match or don't really work you can tell straight away around the backs of these houses i've gone for quite an elaborate bay window at the base and then some smaller windows with a venetian window in the center there on the middle one and these buildings actually have some of the largest gardens in the whole of Wolverhampton. i realized that i don't really build gardens i don't do it out of spite it's more just i haven't really planned the town out as well as i wished so when we come to doing the next town building projects or even later on in the let's build Wolverhampton series i will definitely make sure i plan them a bit better with gardens and just give it a bit more greenery around the place so I'm going to talk about now why I'm not doing part two of the high street just yet and that's mainly down to the fact that I want to build a subscriber special milestone building up there on the high street before I can commence with building the rest of the high street. I know it makes more perfect sense doesn't it so we'll get onto that soon enough I'm approaching the milestone now as we speak uh, so hopefully we'll have that built up soon. Anyway, moving on to the next building along Dock Lane, we've come down to the Lymel Park side of the road, and this building here is based upon one I saw in Plymouth. I know I keep talking about Plymouth. It's going to be the base for the whole Sutton project, so we'll, we'll see a few more of these done. But this building here was quite interesting because it has these rusticated coins on the side, these stairs that I've used in Minecraft, and it also had a really off-white colour to it. So I went, you know what's going to work quite well for that? Bone blocks. First time I've ever built with bone blocks, and I really like it. Like, really like it. Yes, I know there's a strange texture there with the lines coming down the middle. It can work. I think it works quite well, and I'm going to use it a lot more. On the street, I already do, but I'm going to use it a lot more in my builds because it, it helps texture white concrete and quartz very well. So you may be wondering why we aren't building up in the other parts of town yet. Why we come all the way down south to start this new project. Well, I wanted some space to build these beautiful Regency-style buildings because they've been playing on my mind for a long time. I've wanted to do it, uh, and I didn't really have the space in town to do it. So I came down here, terraformed the entirety of these hills and mountains out the way, and finally sat down and just went, right, let's build some whole streets of this. Now, the main motif for this street, like I said, is the white concrete, but it's also the tree-lined road. Uh, and I wanted to do that because all the buildings that I'd seen in London, in Plymouth, and, and you know the other examples I've done, all sit on a tree-lined road, or even completely covered tree-lined roads. And that, to me, just signifies wealth and signifies sort of uh, 
opulence that these buildings hold so dear. You can see this one I'm building here. Uh, it's made out of mushroom stems. Now that's another interesting block idea to use. It's got this really nice texture to it that looks like a stucco, looks like a brick or a stone. And again, it just works really well. Obviously when you break it, it goes a little bit funny colour, so I wouldn't bother doing that. Obviously with World Edit, it's a lot easier to handle than it is in-game. So the next project after this for the Let's Build Wolverhampton uh, series is going to be King's Square. So King's Square is just up in the top corner of the screen. It is, it's where Dock Lane connects into along uh, with the passage that goes up through the grove. It's also known as Grove Passage. Uh, and then you may be questioning as well, why aren't we building further up Dock Lane? You can see there's empty plots up there. So they're going to be the townhouses that face on to King's Square. So they're going to be the backs of those townhouses and they're going to have what's known as a muse or other little buildings at the back that are going to be built up in such a way that they look like a fancy house anyway but they're actually for the servants and for the staff. Along Dock Lane I did want to build a muse and it's behind me uh, when we get to the later part of the video but I never got around to building it uh, and it's mainly because I couldn't find a good reference to go from because all I had was the idea of it needs a stable, it needs some workers houses and it needs like a place to store vehicles and that. So it's kind of the modern day garage but it didn't really materialise which is a shame because I've still got it plotted out so we'll, we'll get round to that when we get the square up and going. Now this part of the video is where I lost a lot of replay footage which is so annoying because this house was really nice and the garden I did on here was using uh, put out campfires as a sort of veranda so it's a shame we can't see it we'll see it in the cinematic instead okay moving on up you can see i've added some cars in between in that lost footage we'll get around to doing those one day i may even do a tutorial on those because they are quite fun little cars now we're getting on to one of the only standalone houses so far all of the houses we've built are semi-detached villas this is grove house number three and it sits here on the corner of king square and dock lane and it features not one or two but three bay windows at the front and it's actually an earlier building built in the 1800 uh, as in 1800 once the grove house had been demolished it features all the classical regency style stuff but it's a bit more neoclassical than it is regency i liked it i really didn't i was quite scared of using just white concrete as a block i usually go for the concrete powder as it's a bit more textured but i think for this building it worked so well that I actually was uh, overcame that fear that I had. I've spoken about this before, but builder's block and the fear of building has been something that's always stopped me from doing things I want to do. Recently, I've given up with even worrying about stuff, and you can see the street is a key example of that. And I finally built a vehicle. I've actually never built a vehicle in the game at all until I built those cars, and it made me so happy. Right, moving on now to the final building of the street. This is Hambridge Villas. Named in honour of the town of Hambridge, which is in the south of Wolverhampton. And it's a new town that's been started up by MS Builds. He is amazing at building in the English styles and his stuff is just perfect. It's, it's exactly what I wanted on the server. And he has so many plans for so many more towns and villages. It just makes me even more happy. So this, this building actually is three houses. So it's uh, two detached ones, semi-detached ones on the end and one terraced in the centre. And again, it's based on a building I saw in London on Street View. And I started off using Stripped Birch as the main building block for this one. And I think it works. It just doesn't fit the street style. So I went back to using white concrete because that's what the rest of the street looks like. And it just works so well. Coming around to the backs of these buildings, they've got these huge bay windows. Uh, the middle one has a nice little terraced area to go stand on. And they have quite long gardens. Now, these are the ones I was talking about the mews being at the back of. We will get around to doing that when we get on to the King's Square section. So guys, it's coming now to the end of the video. And I just want to say thank you all for sort of sticking around for this long. I have really, really enjoyed building this area. And as we sort of pan back now on these shots, you can see how much this has actually grown Wolverhampton. I can't remember how many buildings there are here, but I think I counted at least 10 I did in this one session, if not more. So thank you all for watching. Uh, please enjoy the cinematic, and as I said, I'll be back soon with some more Let's Build Wolverhamptons, so check out the rest of the season the series if you haven't seen it already, and stick around for the cinematic at the end. But thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you later.